Hello everyone, welcome back to day 37 of Brute Strength. This is from Sunday's training, which is my really big upper day where I'm doing pull-ups, I'm doing lateral raises, I'm doing flies, I'm doing ring push-ups, I'm doing um, chest expander, vertical pull aparts, and then I'm doing biceps and triceps. So again, I'm starting out with these chest to bar pull-ups and on this day I have a set where I'm going all out. The set before that are just like four sets of five and if I don't pee in the last set I had an, another rep so today I did one set of six, three sets of five and then an M rep set of 12. I'm just trying to pull as explosively as I can on every single rep. So just maximum speed, I think that is important when you're just looking to get stronger. That should always be your intent to be as fast as possible. Even if you can't move fast, that is how you get the ability to produce more force, which is what we want when we are getting a stronger one, one rep max for strength, because that is all about force. Um, and in general, these um, chest bar pull ups, they're good for my recovery because I can get the same outcome as with weighted pull ups, but without as much fatigue. Um, and also I found that I actually tested my muscle up recently and I could do a muscle up um, pretty easily. So that is probably because I've been doing these. So that is a really good um, benefit of them that I didn't get from weighted pull-ups as much. Because when I'm doing these really high pull-ups, it's basically also training for muscle ups. And I can't wait to see if I'm actually getting stronger in my weighted pull-ups when I return to them. But I want to get 15 reps first. Moving on to lateral raises, here I did 17 reps in the first set with 16 kilo dumbbells to uh, match my own PR. Um, you can see these are being pushed to the absolute limit here in the first set. I'm doing these with my arms 100% straight, directly, directly um, laterally out to the side, um, not, not in the scapular plane. I don't have any shoulder pain from it, don't, no elbow pain, um, despite what people online says it feels really good for me and I'm getting stronger almost every week. Still, um, my goal here is to get 20 reps with 20 kilo dumbbells. So I'm quite a bit of away from that, but I started back at like 10 reps with like 10 kg in the beginning. So I've gotten a lot stronger at those. Um, moving on to the highlight of the training, which was the, um, dumbbell flies and my goal here was really just to get 20 reps with 24 kg like that was the goal of my whole training today on that day um sunday um and i managed to get 20 reps with 24 kilo dumbbells so plus two reps pr it's crazy that i started at like 10 reps nine weeks ago and then i just have kept on adding one rep every single week after that and i've just been able to keep on going um the first couple of weeks, I started, I started a little bit away from failure, which allowed me to recover and build up more strength. So I didn't really begin to hit failure early. Um, and yeah, you can see I'm trying to go really, 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 really deep here. These 20 reps, they were actually a lot better than when I got 18. Um, like the dumbbells here, they're getting significantly under my shoulders. Usually you will just see people um, telling you to stop as soon as the dumbbells are in line with them, your shoulders. But I'm trying to get them as far down as I can. And you will see that on the following sets where I'm just doing 10 reps and I can push it harder. There I'm trying to just go extremely deep. So my arms, they straighten out a little bit in the bottom, which is actually just fine. That is on purpose because I'm trying to get so deep. And um, so that feels really good. I don't have any elbow pain. My chest, that's just, it's just getting a huge pump. Despite it not being really hard in the, um, like it's not obviously not hard in the, in the um, shortened position as the dumbbells get in above my chest, but I still get quite a decent pump and I get a really good um, stretch in my chest. Every time I have this session, I end up being sore for like two, three days. Um, because of this huge stretch I'm getting here and then in the in the ring push-ups 
um, slash flies that you will see later on. And I know it's the cause of this and not just because of the intensity that, that I have because I have the same intensity on my training Wednesday where I do dumbbell presses and um, flies on the floor. And on those, I don't get nearly the same stretch. So I know that this, this, this here is just like pure muscle damage, soreness, and, um, and nothing else. So, but it's, it's really good. Um, and it's probably what people say about dumbbell curls maybe not being the most optimal for strength or hypertrophy because the strength curve is not the best because it's, it's um, not hardest in the middle portion, but you see it's really um, hard in the bottom and then easier towards the top. I st I'm still seeing crazy progress on this. I've been able to move up like 10 kilo per dumbbell since um, four months ago. And now the goal is to um, slowly build up towards 20 reps with 30 kilo dumbbells, um, which is at that point, that's crazy um, strength in the dumbbell um, flies. Especially considering that before this, I could only do um, nine reps with 100 kilo in bench press. And now I've done like 21 reps with 40 kilo dumbbells press. Um, so my dumbbell press strength is going to be like, it's going to be better than my barbell um, bench press strength was before. Um, I'm going to get the 20 reps with 30 kilo flies and 20 reps with 50 kilo dumbbells in the press. Um, yeah, then, then my bench press is going to be so much stronger than it has ever been before. And I've talked about before, like, how I'm able to um, to progress this fast because it's not everyone that will be able to do that when they are at such an advanced le advanced level that I, as I am because obviously I'm not a beginner um, and I would also say I'm beginning to be past, um, past the intermediate stage but it's because my overall press have already, already been above 100 kilos before and um, and I've built such a big tolerance to being able to do triceps work and um, shoulder work and things like that. Because I've done all the handstands that I have, I've just never worked specifically on my chest as much as I'm doing now. Where I'm doing 16 sets a week. And I'm only able to sustain those 16 sets a week because not every set to failure. A lot of it is done for, um, quite a bit from failure. Like I do maybe like half of the sets from, to failure throughout a week. Like, and four of them being the ring push-ups here, which are the most easy to recover from, in my opinion. Um, and that is really good in terms of both recovery and getting in a lot of workload, because we're not looking to get all the fatigue in the world. We want to get the stimulus and, and doing reps that are far from failure, then they're, they're going to give more stimulus. Um, and we're going to be able to get in a higher workload because of that. Also, when we are not working to failure we're able to produce more muscle force keep the speed of the reps really good which is going to translate more into um into strength and by having higher workload we're also giving ourselves the chance to um to build up more muscle because studies nowadays are, sh are showing that volume is actually king more than high intensity training is but i believe you still need to get some sets in to really test your strengths and um, train to failure. That's why I'm doing this MRAP set either in the first set or in the last set to get in that feeling. Um, then moved on to, to these chest expander vertical pull apart with the overhand grip. I managed to get 26 reps with five springs. So when I get 30 here, I'm going to move on to six springs. And I would suspect that it's not going to be many weeks till I get that. Um, I mean, eventually I'll have to move on to um, seven springs and, and then find out. Out what I'm gonna do after that, I'll probably need to have an um, a super spring then because these springs are like 10 kg of um, resistance each, so that goes up like 70 kg and you can get super springs that are like 50 kg just one spring. Um, so I can be able to get a lot more resistance on this, so I can keep on going forever basically. Um, but yeah, these, these are fucking brutal. Um, for those of you who haven't tried it yet, yet um, the chest expander, 
I think it's one of the best old school uh, um, equipments that you can possibly get. Like this, you have this the rolling thunder and things, all the things um, from old school. But I think this one is the best because of the versatility of it. It's not just um, for um, this. You what you're watching here. You can also do. You can do a bit underhand grip, which is going to be um, harder. You can do it um, horizontally with it out in front of you, and then pulling back into your chest. And you can actually decide like how far up you want to um, pull it. You want to pull, pull more towards your um, towards your stomach or higher up your chest. By that, you can also bias a little bit different muscles. You can do biceps work with it by lying down, by standing up. Um, you can do um, presses out to the side with it with it behind your neck. You can just do triceps extension out to the side with it behind your neck, almost like. Um, yeah, some kind of or oh, tricep extension, or at least working a little bit of the long head with it. But I mean, I gotta say this: they absolutely left me um, really, really tired um, because for a few weeks I didn't do them, um, and the next day for my front squat, I definitely had some fatigue from these because I did three sets all the way to failure. And the left pump, like, is absolutely crazy. Like, this is fucking pure lats. Like, nothing more than that. Um, but it felt really good. Um, I think I needed some more work for my back. And this is not the most um, exhausting um, for my mental um, and, yeah, nervous system, things like that. Despite um, going all the way to failure. So I have, like, the pull-ups and I have the pull-ups two times a week. And then I have this once a week, so I'm doing like 11, 12 sets of pull work, which I think is fine. Um, and then I wanted to try this neutral grip bar because I've been doing um, alternating dumbbell curls for the last few weeks and I got up to 20 reps per arm with 18 kilo dumbbells. And therefore, um, I wanted to move on because I didn't really like them a lot. I just wanted to get up to the 18 kilo for 20 reps and then move on. So here I got 41 kg, the bar here is, um, is 11 kg and then 30 kg of extra weight on it for 11, 11 and 10 reps. And I'm just going to slowly work up to um, 20 reps with this. What I realized by using this bar instead of maybe something like an E-set bar was that because the weight is a little bit out in them, um, in the middle of the thing, not the same thing that, not in the, um, not as close to me as if I'm doing um, an um, easy bar curl in the bottom. It becomes a little bit harder in the in the um, in the middle and in the top. That that is actually um, really nice. So um, I like that I have to grind so much in the in the middle when it starts to get hard, and it actually felt a lot better than I thought it would doing this. Um, so I, I will keep on doing this definitely for um, the trainings on Sundays. Um, in general, bicep training has been going pretty good. I've been able to, as I've talked about, um, increase my preacher curl from 9 to 13 reps with 33 kg. Um, and that is nice because biceps has always been my weakest point in terms of um, the upper body together with my back, um, like the thing I had the hardest time to um, improve at. I've already been strong. I've always been strong in um, when in the triceps uh, because of all the calisthenic things I've done, but I've never really done much for my um, biceps because I've never really wanted to just get big biceps. Um, but it's nice to see that I'm actually getting really getting stronger at the things. Now I know that people doing preacher curls like Bolt Omniman um, with reps with 50 kg and I know that I wouldn't be able to do just one rep with that. But hopefully with um, keeping, on, keeping on working here and going hard with it, I should be able to um, get around that level. Here I'm just doing a back offset, um, 31 kg just rest, pause, just get as many reps as you can. 
and I'm pulling out like so many hard reps here. That is why I'm also not doing rest pause on everything I'm doing. Um, or if I'm doing it, I'm often I'm not going all out in every set because basically if I kept going with shorter rest, I would fail maybe at like 16 reps here. But because I'm able to take the rest in the bottom, I can squeeze out so many more reps that are actually really hard for me. And you could see like the last rep there, the second point there throughout the middle was insane, but it felt really good. And in the training with some pump for the triceps, as usual, three sets here and a quintuple um, drop set to end with. And then the next day I also did four sets of this to failure just to fucking kill the triceps. Um, the goal is just to get this strung together with the chest and the shoulders to eventually test how my, um, my overhead press benefits from that when I start training that again and my overhead tricep extension too. So, yeah, this was a really hard set. I'm trying to just stay with my elbows on the bench constantly because then I can totally isolate the, um, the triceps in an overhead tricep extension manner. That is why I like this exercise so much. Um, I've seen people do, see people do overhead tricep extension with the cable just standing up, but this gives more stability. And yet I've never seen anyone do it despite people being so much um, like form suckers and wanting to, everything to be optimized. So, and this is definitely something that is totally optimized. That is all for now. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.